guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is sheila in today's video we're going to be learning how to make this fuzzy top um i made this about two days back i had somewhere to rush to and i wanted something unique for my outfit i'll be attaching some photos of me wearing this top and i made a very quick project this took me less than an hour or less than two hours so um it's a very quick project but uh it can be really intimidating if you've never used this yarn before and also if you've ever used it but you don't know how to go about the tricks to work with when you're using it so uh, in today's video i'm going to be sharing those tips with you guys this is my second time working with this yarn because the first time i was just trying to figure it out but now i'm a bit more uh, well versed with the yarn so let's get started so this is a very simple project that has almost a direct approach this should be the measurement of your bust so i recommend you have a top measure to measure around your bust and for me that was let me measure right now and they see around my rib cage is 29 inches so um you're going to get your measure your measurement around your bust and divide it by two because we are going to be making two panels then we join them in the sides and then we shall do the shaping of the bust and then the straps and we shall be attaching finally so let's get into the video so the materials you'll need for this project are yarn of course fuzzy yarn and i'm going to be using this brand it's called Katopu and it's made in Turkey and I'm going to be using it in the color pink this is the color that I'm going to be using then you'll need a pair of scissors and you can see the yarn recommends a 4 to 4.5 millimeter crochet hook but I'll be using a 6.5 so uh, for this fuzzy yarn I would really advise you go at least some um, hook sizes up so that you get um, bigger stitches that you can feel while working. I don't really advise smaller hooks because I think I've had my fair share of them. I first started with this and it didn't really work for me at all. So I shifted to this or a seven millimeter crochet hook and it worked perfectly fine. So I'll be using a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook and yeah i hope you already measured your bust measurement around your rib cage so let's get started so you're going to grab your yarn and we're going to start off with a slip knot just like we start any crochet project now uh you need to treat this as a normal yarn so that you can uh, overcome the challenges that it comes with otherwise if you feel like it's intimidating then you'll be a bit biased while working with it so um i did a total of 30 chains i told you we shall be doing two panels <coughs> sorry the back panel and the front panel so for my back panel i'm going to do 30 chains so one two three you can see this uh effect covers the stitches but try to make your stitches a bit loose four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one 22 23 24 25 26 27 28 29 and 30 so i have my 30 chains that's my foundation chain and i'm going to add one more chain so i have a total of 31 chains so for the first row you'll be 
able to see the stitches a bit you can see there you can walk your way around for the first row so go into the second chain from the hook which is this one and place a single crochet sorry place a single crochet and then continue to place one single crochet in each and every stitch all the way across so what I do I keep in mind the number of chains that I had and I also have to know the number of stitches that I need to have so so far I have three single crochets and I know I have to have 30 because the extra chain was the turning chain so so far I have three and I go on counting four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen so I'm trying to look for the stitches 14 15 and as I had told you um, the first row may not really be intimidating because you can kind of see the stitches through 15 16 17 18 19 20 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30 in the very last chain. So I have my 30 single crochets and this is how the work looks like. You can see you can't even see the stitches. So we're going to row two and we're going to chain up one and turn our work. And this chain one doesn't count as a stitch. So you don't count it as a stitch. Um, you go into the very first stitch with one single crochet. So this is the point where you need to fill your stitches. When you touch like this, if you're using the same exact yarn, just go uh, in that space where you estimate the second stitch to be. You'll be able to touch the two loops in which you have to go through and place a single crochet. That's two, three, four, Five, six, seven. So as you go on working with this yarn, so I'm on the seventh stitch, you will notice that with time you will know how to estimate how big your stitches are and you'll know what gap to leave while working with this yarn. So that's what I mastered. And I just have to make sure I have the same exact number of stitches. So this is 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 28, 29, and 30. 
so I have my 30 stitches again and I'm going to keep repeating that until I have the length of the top that I want so for me I wanted a crop top so if you want the same exact look as mine uh, for reference I did a total of 15 rows and this is my back panel so I'm going to continue working until I get a total of 15 rows and don't forget to chain one and turn your work at the beginning of each and every row and don't forget to have the same exact number of stitches for each and every row so go ahead and keep working until you have a total of 15 rows and the other thing I would advise you to do is to have somewhere to knot the number of rows that you have because um, this yarn doesn't really show the number of rows you can't tell how many rows you've done so far so you either have a row counter or you have a notebook where to note down the number of rows that that you're doing while um, working so if maybe you have a total of 15 rows you can write down number one two three four five up to 15 and every time you finish that row you tick it off you mark it done so that you don't get confused because you may get to the 15th row and you don't even know whether it's the 15th or the 17th or the 20th so that's a little tip for you and yeah keep working until you have your 15 rows or whichever number of rows that you need for your top sorry so i did a total of 15 rows and this is what i came up with you can see you can't tell that the rows are worked like this or like this so that's the most confusing thing about this yarn so i have my 15 rows and i'm going to go ahead and make the same exact panel for my front panel but this time less by five rows so if i have 15 rows here then that means i'll have 10 rows for the front panel before we do the shaping of the bust so i did mine and these are 10 rows the behind panel is 15 rows and then if you had 20 rows let me say and you wanted your top a bit long so you should have 20 rows for the back panel and 15 rows for the front panel so whichever number you decided to do for your back panel take off five rows and um, do the front panel less by five rows so i have my two panels finished here same exact just one is less by five rows so i'm going to take away my back panel at this moment and we are going to start shaping the front panel we are going to start creating some sort of backups or breast coverage so this is uh 10 rows and you can see that the, the back panel has 15 rows and then I want to point out something while you work we are going to maintain this flat we are going to be shaping the bust area but we are going to maintain this flat for five more rows so that we can get to this uh, height and then we shall start shaping the bust on the outside part from the 15th row of the front panel I hope I'm clear on that I'm trying to explain it as best as I can so i'm going to be showing you how so take away this so i already know that i have a total of um 30 stitches all the way across so i know that my 15th stitch is the exact middle of my work so you're going to chain up one we're going to start shaping the bust but for the first five rows we're going to be working one side first then we shall go to the other side so for the first five rows we are going to maintain this flat which we won't be shaping the bust on the outside of the top so chain one and go into the very first stitch with a single crochet that is one two three four five six seven sorry seven eight nine 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So this is the exact mid of my work, the 15th stitch, because I had 30 stitches all the way across, and 15 is half of 30. So after this, you're going to chain up one and turn your work. We are going to first be working on this side, then we shall go to the opposite side. So after chaining one and turning, we are going to be decreasing now. So what I do, I just don't go into the first stitch. I go directly into the second stitch. So skip the first stitch and go into the second stitch. So you should have a total of 14 stitches for this row. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, <coughs> eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So this is the second row when we are not decreasing on the outside part. So we are going to chain up one. This will be the third row. And go into the very first stitch because you are not decreasing on the outside part of the of the top. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So this row should be 13 uh, stitches. We are going to be decreasing on the inside part. So you're going to skip uh, over this second last stitch and go into the very last stitch. So now I have 13 stitches. The previous row had 14, now I have 13. Then this is the fourth row when we are not decreasing on this side. And it should be 12 stitches because we are decreasing on the inside so we don't go into the very first stitch we go into the second so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11 and 12 so this is the fourth row when we are not decreasing on this side then this is the final row that we are not going to be decreasing on this side so I go into the first stitch one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so the previous row had 12 12 stitches so that means this one should be 11 so i'm going to skip over the second last stitch and go into the very last one so i have a total of 11 stitches so this is how my work looks like you can see it's decreasing on the inside but not on the outside so after your fifth row of not decreasing on this side you're going to uh, chain one and turn your work. Now you're going to start decreasing on both sides and creating that cup area. So skip the first and go into the second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it should be uh, 10 but we are decreasing on this side so I'm going to skip this and go into the very last stitch and now I have 9 stitches and then I'll chain up one and turn my work skip the very first stitch from now on you're going to be decreasing on both sides so skip the first stitch go into the second one two three four, five, six, seven, 
skip over the next one and so just keep doing that chain one and turn and skip the first stitch and go into all the middle stitches and re also decrease at the end of the row the first stitch so with this uh, yarn the thing that I love about it is even if you make mistakes they are almost invisible so someone can see perfection but you you know where you put the mistakes but they won't show it's not like this clean yarns so I want a total of three stitches so once I get to having three stitches this is what I have for my work and I'm going to continue working one single crochet chain one and turn the moment you have three stitches you go into all the stitches with one single crochet chain one turn one single crochet in each of the three stitches so at this point I don't want to cut my yarn before I finish this side entirely because uh, it can give you a hard time trying to attach the yarn again and all that having loose ends so I want to get done with this side once and for all and then I do the same exact thing on the other side so I'm going to keep working until I have the length of the strap that I want. I believe I did a total of uh, about 20 rows. That was a uh, good fitting for me. So, so far I'm, I'm having five rows here. So go ahead and do your um, 20 rows for the strap. So this is how my work looks like after 20 rows and we are going to go ahead and work the same exact thing on this side and then I'll show you how to attach your yarn, how to attach your straps to the back panel. So I went ahead to work on my second side the same exact way that I worked my first side and this is what I have. Uh, I did my 20 rows of the strap make sure it's not so long and not so short because if it's so short it's going to be super cropped if it's so long it's going to expose your bust area so make sure it's just enough I just did 20 rows for mine and now after this you can see we have the same exact look on both sides after this we are going to reintroduce our back panel which is this one And you're going to decide which is the front side, which is the back side. And I don't think I have a front or back side. I feel like both sides look the same. So you're going to place it on your front panel and we're going to seam these sides together. The sides. So uh, you're going to need a tapestry needle. And for me this is what I'm going to use and I left a very long strand I have a strand lying around here so I can go ahead and use that for this side and then for this side I'll just get one from my yarn so This yarn is really really soft and it's not as stiff as these other yarns so I'm having a hard time putting it through that tapestry needle oh god so after putting your yarn through the tapestry needle you're going to just go into the sides and just join normally maybe with a blanket stitch or a mattress stitch 
sorry or any way you prefer to do it so I'm just going in and out of the other side and this should be able to join my work perfectly well so it's kind of stuck here I don't know why I think it got stuck somewhere. Okay, let's just continue. Oh, there's a knot somewhere here. That's why it's getting stuck, but it's okay, I'll walk with it like that. So I'm just joining the sides together, just going into random stitches and just making sure that they're evenly joined. That's all. You don't have to follow a particular format. So I guess I'm done here and this is what it looks like on the side. The seam line doesn't show so that's a bonus for this yarn and then I'm going to do the same exact thing on this side and then I come back to show you how I attach my straps. So after attaching both sides this is what I have. Now I'm going to be attaching my straps to the back. So I don't have strands that I left here, but if you have any loose ends, that would be great for you. Um, I'm going to just get one from here. So we're going to just count a few inches from this side, about two to three inches, then we attach. So I'll leave three inches, I guess, and I'll attach my yarn. then start attaching the straps together to the back panel. And that's what we have. Make sure it's secure enough. That's why I'm going in like several times so that it doesn't unravel. And after this, you're going to cut this and do the same on the other side. I'm going to use this same exact yarn. And I measure three inches from this side. Nowhere to place my strap. And I do the same exact thing on this side. So this is what we have. We're almost coming to the end of our work. And I hope you achieve the generalship. Hope your generalship is also as perfect as mine. 
so this is what we've come up with and this marks the end of this tutorial this is a very simple and quick project very cozy and this would be a very good top to wear with a pair of jeans or a short skirt or whatever you want to wear it with or however different you want to style it so i hope you've learned a lot from this project i'll see you in my next video bye